Governor, you probably read uh, in Jerry Seib's column in the Wall Street Journal that uh, populism is the flavor du jour of both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. Uh, we'd, he'd noticed there's a lot of agreement on some issues uh, on both sides of the aisle. We're going to show you some, uh, some video uh, from Republicans and Democrats talking about some issues, and then we're going to ask you for your reaction. That's so, fine. So let's start here with Lindsey Graham and Hillary Clinton talking about entitlements. We depended on Social Security benefits to survive. As president, I'll gladly do what it takes to save a program that once saved my family. We have to fix entitlement programs to make sure people who need the benefits the most receive them. Let's just kind of take a deep breath here as a country and say, okay, we're going to have a retirement issue, and people who've worked hard deserve to have uh, enough security when they retire so that they can have a good quality of life. And so I, I'm 100% committed to that. Yeah, you already shaking your head. I didn't even get a chance to ask the question, but go ahead. Bring I mean, on. That's a pretty radical position to say that they're in favor of keeping Social Security. I mean, <laughs> they must have taken a number of polls, but it's shocking to me. I'm, it, I don't think there's going to be anybody in America who says we should not take care of people who have worked hard in their old age and that we have to protect Social Security. Not exact, exactly controversial. Right, but the, but the question is how, right? So when you the look question at... question is how. The, 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 so for you, you just talk a little bit about what you would do real quick. What, what's on your, Social Security? Yeah, I, on, so on entitlements in general. Uh, on entitlements in general, you have to look at them to make them sustainable. Let me just give you an example on Medicare. I am against the high income tax rates, but I'm not against raising deductibles and raising co-pays for people earning $250,000 a year who are on Medicare. I think that's perfectly appropriate. On Medicaid, I am in favor of what Bowl Simpson recommended, block granting it to the states, letting them restructure it for what works best with the states. I think there are solutions out there. All right, let's bring Mark in here. Okay, Governor, I want to play you one more of these again. We want to hear your views, but let you listen to some of your colleagues who are also running for president. This is Ted Cruz and Martin O'Malley talking about Wall Street. My criticism with Washington is they engage in crony capitalism. They give favors to Wall Street and big business, and that's why I've been an outspoken opponent of crony capitalism, taking on leaders in both parties. Recently, the CEO of Goldman Sachs let his employees know that he'd be just fine with either Bush or Clinton. I bet he would. <laughs> well, I've got news for the bullies of Wall Street. The presidency is not a crown to be passed back and forth by you between two royal families. So, Governor, you were the governor of New York, where Wall Street obviously is a big deal. What's your view of the proper role for Wall Street in our economy and whether there are any excesses there that, as president, you'd like to see restrained? I think there are tremendous excesses there and everywhere. And really, it starts with the lobbying power in Washington that has dramatically uh, created a, tra a tax code that is incomprehensible. Just two things I'd do, Mark. First of all, I'd have a lifetime ban on any former member of Congress ever serving a as a lobbyist in Washington, D.C. I don't want Goldman Sachs or I don't want the teachers union hiring my senator when they retire or lose and peddling their influence instead of looking to help the people who sent them to Washington. Go, go, Governor, if I could, just specifically sure. on Wall Street, what do you think of the role Wall Street plays in our economy, in our politics today? I think it has far too great an impact uh, on, on Washington and particularly on our tax code. And that was point two, Mark. I throw out the entire tax code, the lobbyist written um, I think it's 74,600 pages of special interest protecting gobbledygook. Throw it out. Get rid of those loopholes, those tax credits, those special breaks, whether they're for Wall Street or some other organization. Lower the rates. Simplify the code. Get rid of former legislators lobbying, not just being against crony capitalism. Everybody is actually doing something about it. Governor, we, you have a, a bunch of, of issue positions that are... Uh, would make you somewhat unique in the Republican field, uh, particularly on social issues right. and some domestic issues. I want to talk right. about guns with you for a second sure. real quick. You signed a, a very 
uh, a pretty sweeping gun control bill yes. in this state uh, in New York today. We just saw some statistics that came out that gun violence is uh, rising uh, dramatically or at least worryingly here in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, our, the NRA did not like that bill you signed. Right. Um, the NRA still has a lot of power in your party. How are right. you going to talk about guns as you go out on the campaign trail? You know, John, I've always believed the states are the laboratory of democracy. And what we were doing at the state level are things that I believed we had the authority under the Second Amendment to do. At the federal level, it's totally different. Now, I don't think they should change the gun laws in Washington at all right now. I think they should do two things. One is enforce the existing laws better because, for example, it's illegal to take guns across state lines. The criminals running them from the south do that constantly. And then mental health. Most right. gun violent, the horrible incidents are people who are mentally ill and haven't gotten treatment. You know it's the case, though, that the NRA, although you make that distinction between state and federal, right. the NRA does not see it quite I that way. I understand that. Are you, are you worried about their influence? You worried about what they're going to say about uh, you when you campaign? I worry about what I believe. There are people who are going to support me, people who are not. You do your best. Okay. Governor, do you believe uh, the woman's right to an abortion is a constitutionally protected right and should be? Well, uh, it is right now because uh, of Roe v. Wade and the Supreme right, Court has should, said that it, it is. Should it continue to be in your view? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what I believe is that we should not be uh, trying to pass a constitutional amendment in Washington. What we should be doing is following Roe v. Wade uh, and to the extent there are things where states want to disagree within the restrictions that the Supreme Court has put on them. Uh, there's no reason why New York and Texas have to have the same laws. Um, real quick, on just mm -hmm. on gay rights, you've been a big advocate of gay rights, or at least signed a bill yes. in this. Gay marriage, I know you think it's a state issue, but you're for it? Uh, personally, I'm not for it, but I do believe that if states choose to have it, that's their prerogative. That's the way the Constitution works. That's the way our government should work. All right.